Welcome back. Lawmakers in South Africa are today debating a vote of no confidence on President Jacob Zuma as calls continue for him to step down from office. The debate follows last week's anti-corruption anti probe, which raised allegations of misconduct against him. But the ruling African National Congress is confident the motion will not succeed. It's a third time in less than 12 months that the president is facing a no-confidence vote. An investigation by the country's anti-corruption watchdog said a judicial inquiry should be set up to further investigate allegations of criminal activity in Mr. Zuma's government. The investigation found evidence that the Guptas, a business family with links to Mr. Zuma, may have wielded undue political influence over the appointment of ministers. Both Mr. Zuma and the Guptas have denied any wrongdoing. The CEO of uh, Junto Media, Mr. Lucas Malloy, joins us from Johannesburg to discuss this. Uh, Mr. Malloy, it's great to have you again on Network Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, and good day to your, to your viewers. Well, good day to you too. Have the lawmakers decided now, or are they still in Parliament, or is Parliament still holding? Um, I didn't get that one. You said the lawmakers? Yes. Um, are they still discussing this uh, uh, no-confidence vote, or are they done? Do we know the Correct. results of their, of their deliberations? Correct, yes. There is still deliberations on, uh, on the motion itself. So um, they, they actually haven't, uh, haven't concluded on the matter. You remember that it was uh, the sixth item onto the, onto the agenda of the House today. Hmm. If it pulls through, what could happen? Um, the, the, well, in terms of the motion and that, and this is where it gets a bit complicated, because in terms of the motion and that, is that if the motion of confidence is passed, mm. um, then the president will be impeached, and um, the ANC would then have to propose um, an interim president. Failing that, if there is no one to take over, they will then have to dissolve parliament and have an early election. And that's where the problem is, because the ANC has no successor in mind for President Jacob Zuma. At the moment, where things are with the ANC, with the divisions that is there, um, I do not believe that the ANC would be able to put any name forward because um, um, whether the ANC agrees or they do not agree, there is division, there is camp. And for an example, there is a Phil Ramaphosa camp and there is a Nkosazana Zuma camp and whether they, they are saying yes, there is something like that or refusing to, 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 to agree or, or, or they are denouncing that, but that is the fact. But they wouldn't be able to put one candidate, say this is who the candidate is. That sounds pretty tough. Uh, um, what about the opposition in South Africa? Do they have a say in this? Um, the, the opposition, the opposition, you see, the thing with the, the opposition parties is, is, is that. Uh, uh, also, it, it is sort of sitting in. I, I don't think opposition parties want necessarily President Zuma um, to to be impeached. What they are after is to prove to the to the the citizens of South Africa that the ANC as a party is unfit to govern. So the whole issue is not really about the president. The president become just the subject of the issue, but the whole issue is about the ANC's failure to run an efficient and effective, um, honest government. Um, Mr. Malloy, the, the calls are going for President Jacob Zuma to step down, even though you know this is up for uh, debates at the parliament, but since the time the anti-corruption report was released, have there been any more developments from that? Um, I think what has been what, what has been what has been coming out is, and, and as you remember, this is the third uh, um, uh, vote of no confidence, uh, the motion of vote of no confidence in only two years. So the the, the the problem is what is coming out is every single time a new story comes out every single month or week about the president, 
Now, since the state of uh, uh, um, um, state of capture by the public uh, protector and that, it is fitting to where the president hasn't said a way in terms of am I going to take this for review or are we uh, agreeing with it? Now, only the ANC has come out to say that the report itself does not make any conclusions it is suggesting that there be a commission that is formed. And the president hasn't taken out on review. The expectation is that he will take it out on review like he always done the last minute um, of things. Mr. Lucas Malloy, I appreciate you joining us on Network Africa. Now, Kenyan troops serving in the United Nations mission in South Sudan has started leaving the country in compliance with withdrawal order by the government. Just last week, Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta ordered the withdrawal of troops in response to the sacking of the Kenyan commander of the UNMIS force. Multiple sources with the United Nations told Sudan Tribune on Wednesday that up to 100 Kenyan soldiers and officers have pulled out from WAU. Kenya has started to withdraw its troops from South Sudan peacekeeping mission, with the first batch of 100 Kenya Defense Forces soldiers landing in Nairobi. The troops arrive from the city of Wau in South Sudan and over 1,000 more are expected back in the coming days. Kenya's decision of withdrawing troops came only a day after Lieutenant General Johnson Ondeiki, commander of the UN peacekeeping force in South Sudan, was dismissed by the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for failing to protect civilians. These missions are still continuing in many parts of the, of the world as it is today and even within our region. We are committed in our peacekeeping operations as a credible and well-trained force deeply rooted in professionalism. According to Kenyan authorities, the troops are being withdrawn from various troubled parts of South Sudan. We are pulling out the whole contingent in South Sudan, over a thousand soldiers. This one is dependent on the logistics that the UN is going to give us. Today we have started. We expect some tomorrow. We expect them alternately every other day until all that team is pulled back. The report that sparked this move accuses UN peacekeepers of abandoning their posts and failing to respond to pleas for help from aid workers under attack in a hotel situated less than a mile from a UN compound. In September, South Sudan agreed to deploy 4,000 additional UN peacekeepers but the woes in the country are far from over. The troops will return to their respective units in Kenya and only time will tell what this shortage will do to the UN peacekeeping mission in South Sudan. Educating refugee children from conflict zones in the Central African Republic and protecting girls from teenage marriage is a priority for the UN. But with tens of thousands left out of school, they fear they could lose the battle. Across eastern Cameroon, the influx of refugees from the Central African Republic has strained aid agencies in communities where more than 90,000 child refugees are out of school, leaving them vulnerable to violence, sexual abuse and early marriage. Up to 260,000 refugees from the Central African Republic, half of them children, live in eastern Cameroon, a region with a population of around 1 million. Around 6 in 10 of these refugees have crossed the border from war to Central African Republic since the conflict erupted in 2013, when mainly Muslim Seleka rebels seized power, triggering revenge attacks by Christian militias. Violence has lessened since a February election touted as a step towards reconciliation, but fighting remains frequent, leaving many refugees too afraid to go home. Two-thirds of the refugees here live in villages where they have been taken in by Cameroonian families. In Gado Badzere, the biggest of the seven camps in eastern Cameroon, UNICEF has facilitated a free education program. That's Network Africa today. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani.